Iran's top army commander is killed in a US airstrike in Iraq. Tehran is warning of harsh revenge. Could Qasem Soleimani's assassination trigger a military confrontation? And how would that affect the rest of the Middle East? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Darren Jordan. Iran is vowing revenge on the US for killing its top military commander. Qasem Soleimani died when an American airstrike hit his convoy near the airport in Baghdad. The assassination, ordered by President Trump, marks a dangerous escalation in tensions between the US and Iran. Well, Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei says the general was killed by the cruelest people on earth, adding... Soleimani's martyrdom will make Iran more decisive to resist America's expansionism and to defend our Islamic values. Well, Soleimani was head of the powerful Quds Force of Iran's Revolutionary Guard, which conducts military operations abroad. The U.S. accuses him of creating instability in Syria, Iraq and Lebanon. Iranian leaders call his targeted killing an act of war. Americans have now been urged to leave Iraq in case of reprisal attacks. Zain Bazravi reports. Heartbreak in the upper ranks of the Iranian military at the official announcement of the death of Major General Qasem Soleimani, the commander of Iran's Quds Force, the Revolutionary Guard unit responsible for foreign operations. Soleimani was killed in a U.S. drone strike in Baghdad. And anger at Friday prayers in the Iranian capital for the assassination of a man who led the charge against ISIL in Iraq and Syria and whose death seems likely to lead to more conflict. God willing, it is now time to clear and cleanse the region of these devils. It is now time to show more resistance to the Americans and show our resistance with action, to tell those Yankees to get out of here, get lost. In the early hours of Friday morning, shortly after arriving at Baghdad International Airport, U.S. missiles killed Soleimani and his close ally, Abu Mahdi al-Muhandis, the deputy head of the Iranian-backed Iraqi militia, Hashd al-Shabi. Other members of the group were also killed in the attack. A drone strike hit their convoy as they left the airport. For Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, Soleimani was a trusted confidant, a member of his inner circle. His killing in a targeted attack, the most extreme escalation in tensions between Tehran and Washington in recent years. Khamenei warned there will be revenge. In Tehran, senior leaders met in an emergency meeting of Iran's National Security Council. Many Iranians see the U.S. attack as an act of war. The United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights described the killings as a likely violation of international law. The idea that Iran is not going to respond is, is wishful thinking that will make the, the, the debacle of, of invading Iraq look like a, a walk in the park. I do not think that President Trump really understands what he's gotten the United States into going up against Iran. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo tweeted a video showing Iraqis celebrating the attack. While Soleimani enjoyed widespread support for leading the charge to displace ISIL from Iraqi strongholds, some Iraqis blame Iran for instability and interference in their country, and Soleimani directly for the deaths of more than 500 Iraqis in violent anti-government protests which began in October. Feared by his enemies, inside Iran, Soleimani has for years been one of the most popular national figures in the country. The international face of Iranian resistance to American pressure, he remained largely untouched by the waning popularity in recent years of the country's government over economic issues. While there is talk of revenge, many Iranians don't want to see a war. It will definitely increase violence, but I fundamentally disagree with violence and conflict. I believe people moving toward peace and negotiation to reach their goals is much better. Iranians looked on Soleimani as someone who could protect them. Cut down at the height of his popularity by a U.S. strike, his death marks the lowest point in Iran-U.S. relations in decades. Zain Basrabi for Inside Story. Well, in just a few days, there's been a dramatic escalation in tensions between the U.S. and Iranian-backed groups in Iraq. Last week, a rocket attack struck an Iraqi military base, 
killing an American contractor. Well, two days later, the U.S. launched airstrikes against a pro-Iranian armed group, the Hezbollah Brigades, killing 27 of its fighters. Members and supporters of Iraqi militia, who are also supported by Iran, then stormed the American embassy compound in Baghdad. Well, the assassination of Soleimani has divided politicians in the U.S. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham called it a direct response to Iranian aggression orchestrated by General Soleimani and his proxies. But the Democrats' House Speaker Nancy Pelosi was angry that Congress wasn't consulted beforehand. She said America and the world cannot afford to have tensions escalate to the point of no return. And former U.S. Vice President Joe Biden warned we could be on the brink of a major conflict across the Middle East. Well, let's bring in our guests from Tehran. Hamed Musavi, Professor of Political Science at the University of Tehran. In London, by Skype, Eli Garanmaye, Deputy Director of the Middle East and North Africa Programme at the European Council on Foreign Relations. And here in Doha, Marwan Kabalan, Director of Policy Analysis at the Arab Center for Research and Policy Studies at the Doha Institute. Welcome to you all. Hamad Musavi in Iran, let me start with you, if I may. How are you assessing the killing uh, of Qasem Soleimani by the Americans? Because it now seems that President Trump has pushed Iran into a corner here. I think it's very significant. I mean, this is a very dramatic escalation of hostilities between the two countries. Essentially, uh, we've entered uncharted territories. Uh, there have been a lot of tit-for-tat military operations by both sides in the past three decades. Uh, nevertheless, what just happened in the early hours of today is very significant in the sense that uh, the public assassination of the most powerful Iranian general is essentially putting Iran in a corner where it's not a question of if Iran will respond, but a, a question of when and where Iran will respond. So essentially, I don't think Iran has any choice but to respond to this attack. Uh, let's bring in Eli Garanmaye there in London. Uh, Eli, I mean, it's an interesting observation, is it not? Because many US administrations have blamed Iran for years about its destabilizing activities right across the region. So has President Trump finally done the one thing that so many other US presidents were too scared to do? What we're seeing is now both sides, Iran and the US, over the past week, and particularly in Iraq, really redraw redrawing the red lines for their rules of engagement. So they've gone from six months ago of attacking military installations or drones, for example, to now targeting personnel. This US attack comes after a number of heated exchanges in Iraq over the past week where there have been fatalities. But such a high-ranking assassination from the U.S. side is going to really redraw the red lines for uh, how Iran responds. And it's going to open up a whole new space, I think, for Iran to up the ante in the region. Uh, we'll talk about the response in a second. Let's bring in Marwan Kabalan, uh, who's here in Doha. Marwan, what's your response to the Soleimani killing? I mean, do you think Iran miscalculated the level of U.S. retaliation to the, to the embassy siege in Baghdad? Absolutely. I think um, uh, Iran thought that President Trump was very careful, actually, not to uh, cross the red lines uh, or the rules of engagement between Iran and the United States. Uh, after the downing of the U.S. Uh, plane uh, a few months ago, and also after Iran's provocation concerning the targeting of uh, oil tankers in the in the Gulf, in the Sea of Oman, uh, also after the targeting of the Aramco uh, uh, oil refineries in Saudi Arabia. So I think in Iran, they thought that they might actually go a further step in uh, uh, embarrassing the uh, U.S. president. So I think he have decided, uh, in my opinion, that maybe it's time to respond and uh, I think that was the killing of Soleimani was very much like a, a tantamount to a coup by President Trump in the relationship between Iran uh, and the United States. It changes completely the rules of the game. This is a major blow, I think, to Iran okay. uh, because uh, Soleimani, uh, Soleimani's role might have been exaggerated. He might have been depicted as a, a legendary commander in Iran, but because of that very reason, maybe it's a major blow to Iran. He's the most visible Iranian commander in the history of the Iranian 
uh, of the Islamic Republic of Iran uh, since its establishment four decades ago. So I think, uh, yes, it, it changes the whole uh, uh, rules of the, of the engagement between the two countries. OK, so all eyes are now on Tehran in terms of the response. Hamid Mousavi, uh, Iran's supreme leader, has vowed harsh revenge. Tell, just talk us through what are the options briefly open to the Iranians? What sort of response are we likely and realistically to see? Uh, well, the uh, assassination of Qasem Soleimani, I think, is, view, is viewed in Tehran as an act of war. I mean, it would be akin to Iran assassinating the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Uh, if, if such an event would happen, I mean, you could imagine how the Americans would respond. So I think Iran has no option but to respond. Regarding uh, when and how, I think the Iranians, they really don't want an all-out war. And if Iran uh, decides to attack U.S. bases in the region, which I would say is the number one option, I mean, there are U.S. bases in Iraq and Afghanistan and the United Arab Emirates, etc. Um, that would be one option, but there is always the risk that it would lead to an all-out war. Another option would be to wait and not to retaliate immediately. And uh, when the opportunity comes, uh, use your proxies in Iraq or Lebanon to either attack the Americans or the Israelis. But as of yet, there has been no decision. Um, one thing that was very significant is today when the Iranian National Security Council um, formed an emergency meeting, Ayatollah Khamenei, the supreme leader of Iran for the first time in Iranian history, he actually attended the Security Council meeting, which was confidential. We don't know what happened inside of that meeting. But that shows the significance okay. of the events of the past 24 hours. Um, Eli Geren Maia in London. Um, killing Soleimani is certainly not going to weaken uh, the Revolutionary Guard or the Quds Force, and it certainly won't roll back Iran's ambitions uh, across the region. Uh, so what was the U.S. calculation then? I mean, it's very hard to know with President Trump what the calculations are, uh, but certainly it does seem to be an escalation in this maximum pressure campaign policy. We have a very obscure tweet from the president um, this morning um, talking about how Iran never wins a war but does win negotiations. So make of that, interpret that how you will. Um, he seems to be keeping the space open for diplomacy, which seems to be um, very fantastical at the moment, because to think that an Iranian official would now be able to um, stand in a meeting or a photo op with President Trump is really far-fetched. Um, it's, it's really unclear what the U.S. wanted to do. Maybe it was to send a message um, to Iran uh, that yeah, escalation would be met with further escalation. But I think the risk now for both sides is, although they say they don't want a direct conflict, at some point it's going to be very difficult to manage this escalatory process. And we've seen sharp events back to back over the last six months since the U.S. withdrew uh, from the nuclear deal and began to impose crippling sanctions on Iran. And there doesn't seem to be any off-ramps. The Europeans tried to create an off-ramp. Uh, through President Macron's initiative last September, but neither Trump nor the Iranians really bited on that offer. And it seems All right. that they're now cornered into a boxing match where it's unclear how they're going to get out of this game of escalation now. Marwan Kamalan uh, here in Doha, let's come back to you. I mean, as we know, Iran has huge influence uh, right across the Middle East uh, with a number of allies and proxy militias in places uh, like Iraq, Syria, Lebanon. What sort of retaliation then do you think is coming and how careful does Tehran have to be in measuring that response? Well, I think Iran is in, in a very difficult situation right now because they know very well, actually, that if they are proven to be responsible for any attack on U.S. installations, military or otherwise, in the region, there will be a very strong response by the United States. Look at the, uh, at the reaction by the United States concerning the U.S. embassy in, in Baghdad. I think U.S. president has uh, uh, sent the, the message uh, very clear and loud that if the Iranians are going to target U.S. interests in the region, there will be serious consequences for and dire consequences 
actually for the Iranians. So I don't really know how the Iranians will be responding. Iran has proven to be a very rational and very careful actor in dealing with the United States. And I, I, I think uh, when they uh, decided to attack the U.S. embassy in Baghdad, I think they, they overstepped actually uh, the lines uh, which have been drawn by the Americans. I think uh, they put the American president in a very uh, difficult position. That, that is how I see it, because the U.S. president in, a, in an election year, he doesn't want to be seen as a weak president. He doesn't want actually to have a repetition of the Benghazi scenario when the U.S. embassy was attacked and the U.S. ambassador was killed. So he was he criticized the, the Obama administration at that time for being very weak and reacting to that incident. He doesn't want to be look look weak at an election year. So I think here Iran is to be need to be very careful. The U.S. president in a in a very important uh, 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 confrontation, political confrontation inside the United States, and he's willing actually to take any sort of action in order to win uh, uh, to be to be reelected. All right, let's bring him back, uh, Hamid Mousavi, there in Tehran. Hamid, how careful does Iran then need to be about any kind of retaliation that could lead uh, to a full-scale war? I mean, Iran must know that it cannot win a toe-to-toe -to -toe military confrontation with the United States. Um, yes, that is very true. But at the same time, I don't think the Trump administration wants all that war in an election year. So there can be a limited military confrontation. Of course, when you have military confrontation, there is always the risk of further escalation and even all out war. But at the same time, we have to consider the fact that Iranian options are quite limited. At the same time, there are also non-military options as well. Um, one would be to withdraw from the nuclear deal, which actually might happen even if Iran takes the military route. Uh, so both on the nuclear front front and on the military front, I think Iran has no choice but to respond. Um, Eli Guerin Maye, um, if there is further escalation, the U.S. presumably is not likely to put boots uh, on the ground in Iran. Trump is in an election year, of course, uh, as Marwan Kabbalan was saying there, uh, and any military action could be politically detrimental, couldn't it? No, for sure. And I think this is why Trump has repeatedly said that he doesn't want to go to war with Iran. And you know, the Iranian side is very clear that their conventional military power is dwarfed by that of the U.S., Israel, and other regional allies of the U.S. in the region. But Iran has proven itself to be incredibly sophisticated at asymmetric warfare, at cyber attacks. Um, and also, remember, um, Iran has other options on the table as well, including the political track. So one outcome that we may see out of this is a much bigger push from Tehran with its allies in both Iraq and Afghanistan to push for a U.S. withdrawal of military forces. And that would be a major political win for some uh, power functions inside Iran who have wanted the U.S. to essentially depart from Iran's borders for a very long time. OK, so we have Iran on one side, we have the U.S. on the other. Caught in the middle, of course, is Iraq. Uh, Marwan Kabbalan, uh, how will Iraq decide what its response will be and what sort of conversation it will have with Iran? And could the killing of Soleimani actually push Iraq closer to Iran in terms of geopolitical influence and relationships? In fact, uh, Iraq is very much divided right now between uh, uh, the demonstrators uh, on the street, who we have seen some of them actually celebrating the death of Soleimani earlier in the morning. And on the other hand, we have the pro-Iran militias who tried actually to storm the U.S. embassy in Baghdad. And they were, in fact, the trigger for this uh, escalation between Iran and uh, and the United States. So when you when you look at Iraq, you can't actually speak about one Iraq. Uh, Iraq, as I said, is, uh, is is very much divided, including within those actually who are uh, close to Iran, because we have seen today, for example, Muqtada al-Sadr trying actually to make, uh, to exploit the, the killing of Abu Mahdi al-Muhandis and, uh, 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 and the uh, disappearance of the other leaders of the popular mobilization forces in, in Iraq in order to inflict his, his muscle and try uh, and to, uh, uh, to gain uh, uh, ground uh, inside Iraq. So I think when you talk about Iraq, we have to be very careful uh, uh, on who's actually will be supporting Iran, who's actually is working against Iran. Um, Hamid Mousavi uh, in Tehran, let's remind ourselves uh, that Iran is suffering under U.S. sanctions. It's 
economies in tatters. So whilst Soleimani may be considered a hero and a martyr uh, by some people, I mean, do ordinary Iranians uh, think that they have more important things to worry about, like jobs, the economy, where the next meal is coming from? Um, yes, that's true. But at the same time, Qasem Soleimani was actually a quite liked public figure in Iran. Uh, public polling by the University of Maryland um, last summer shows that Qasem Soleimani actual ha actually had the highest approval rating of all Iranian political figures, including the Iranian president. Um, Qasem Soleimani was quite smart in the sense that he wouldn't get involved in Iranian domestic politics. And as a result, he was quite liked by both factions within Iran. Um, at the same time, um, we have to remember that the economic sanctions on Iran did not come out of the blue. I mean, they were implemented again by this Trump administration. And it is actually the assassination of Qasem Soleimani is another extension of the so-called maximum pressure campaign. And Iran has essentially been retaliating, uh, whether in the Persian Gulf or, you know, in regards uh, to the events in Iraq. All of this happened when the United States decided to leave the nuclear deal. Now, the events of the past 24 hours, I think, have essentially killed any chance of negotiation and reaching a deal with the Trump administration. And I don't think this is actually okay. going to be beneficial for Trump, who was hoping to reach a deal with Iran before the elections. Eli garen -Maya, let me come back to you, because you touched uh, just very quickly on uh, the possibility of troop withdrawals. I mean, this this does raise a much broader question about U.S. foreign policy, or lack of it. I mean, some experts suggest that this could lead to Trump actually withdrawing U.S. troops from Iraq. It's an election year, as you say, uh, and Trump probably can't be bothered with all this trouble in the Middle East, Afghanistan and Syria. Well, certainly, uh, Trump campaigned on bringing U.S. forces home. He made a decision to withdraw troops from Syria. Um, and he's working hard on a deal with the Taliban, or he was at least in the past, which included U.S. Uh, troop withdrawal. So actually, this assassination, depending on how it plays out with uh, Iraq and Afghanistan, could actually mark a new decline in U.S. relations with Kabul and Baghdad. We'll have to see. As um, your other guest mentioned, th these countries are divided in how they view U.S. presence um, in their countries. But certainly, we've had statement after statement today from Iraqi political leaders calling this an act of aggression, this assassination on their soil. And this will heat up the debate about the type of role that these countries want the United States to have on their soil going forward. Marwan Kamal, and a final thought from you. I mean, how do you see this crisis playing out? I mean, is there now a real danger of more instability, more unrest right across the Middle East? I mean, this is pretty bad for everyone, isn't it? Absolutely. There is always the potential for uh, further escalation. Uh, I mean, this is, uh, as I said earlier, I mean, this is something that Iran will have to somehow respond to. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, it's going to be very difficult for them to escape retaliation by the United States. So uh, the situation is very tense, is very uh, dangerous. Uh, and the, the moment actually you start this uh, round of escalation, it's very difficult to know where it ends. Uh, I am not saying that the two countries are going to, uh, okay. to a full, uh, a full out uh, com military confrontation, but probably we'll, we'll, see, we'll see further escalation in the coming weeks and months. Hamid Musavi, just briefly, a final thought from you. What is Iran's end game here? Trump says he wants a deal with Iran, but then he kills Soleimani. So what next? Very briefly. Um, I think Iran's end game is to force the Americans to leave the region. Uh, American forces in the region are a significant national threat to Iranian security. And I think in this regard, the killing of Qasem Soleimani is actually going to weaken the American position in the Middle East. All right, uh, that's all we have time for. Thank you very much indeed uh, to all our guests. Hamid Musavi there in the Iranian capital, Tehran. Eli Geranmaye in London and Marwan Kabalan here in Doha. Thank you all very much. And thank you, too, for watching. You can see the programme again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. And you can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Darren Jordan, and the whole team here, goodbye for now.